cancer can be a terrible and devastating disease. But did you know that a large number of cancers are caused by mutations within signal transduction pathways? Without these pathways to control and modulate their growth, cancer cells grow out of control, forming tumors and metastasizing to different areas all over your body. In this video, we'll take a look at how mutations within the genes that control various aspects of signal transduction pathways can render a pathway completely useless and even cause cancer and other diseases. Plus, we'll see how molecules in the environment, whether they are natural or artificial, can both activate and inhibit various cellular signal transduction pathways. There will definitely be questions on the AP test that ask you to evaluate changes to signal transduction pathways. So stick with us as we cover how to evaluate changes in signal transduction pathways. This video covers section 4.4 of the AP Biology curriculum. We'll start with a broad overview of the complexity of signal transduction pathways and the many changes that can lead to them becoming disrupted. Then we'll take a closer look at changes to signal molecules and receptor proteins. After the first quiz, we'll see how things can get really complicated with changes to downstream components of signal transduction pathways. Finally, we'll see how certain chemicals can inhibit or activate different signal transduction pathways. If you only need to review one of these sections, feel free to skip forward to the times outlined here. Otherwise, let's get started. While signal transduction pathways can be immensely complex, there are only a few things that can actually change and disrupt the pathways. First off, there are always environmental conditions that can denature proteins and that will disrupt signal transduction pathways. If the temperature or pH of the cell gets outside of a livable range, the proteins and enzymes of a cell's signal transduction pathways will denature and will no longer function. This is part of the reason why cells die outside of their livable range. However, there are a few other things that can drastically change the function of a signal transduction pathway. Consider the fact that signal transduction pathways consist of a series of proteins and enzymes connected by a number of molecules that are created by other proteins and enzymes. All of these proteins and enzymes are products of protein synthesis. Since protein synthesis relies on a sequence of nucleotides within the DNA, any mutation within the DNA will have downstream effects on the protein a mutated gene codes for. Since there are so many proteins within a single signal transduction pathway, this leaves a huge potential for pathways to become disrupted. However, not all enzymes within the system cause the same level of disruption. For instance, if the gene that creates the receptor protein gets mutated, it could disrupt the entire signal transduction pathway. By contrast, if an enzyme at the end of the signal cascade is subject to a mutation, this may result in less of a change to the overall cellular response. Here, each enzyme is only one of hundreds or thousands of enzymes responding to the original signal. Plus, many mutations in receptor proteins and other parts of signal transduction pathways can shut down important cellular growth pathways that stop a cell from dividing too much. If these pathways are overactivated or changed, it can lead to the development of cancer cells. Think about this. Signal transduction pathways can be sort of like a game of Jenga. Blocks at the top of the stack are like enzymes at the end of the signal transduction pathway. You can easily remove these blocks without disrupting the whole structure. Blocks at the bottom of the stack are like the signal receptor proteins. Any wrong move with these can easily disrupt the whole structure. As we start to look at specific ways that signal transduction pathways can go wrong, try to imagine how these changes would play out in both a single cell and in a larger organism. To see how drastically mutations can affect signal molecules, the receptors that receive the signals and the subsequent signal transduction pathway, let's consider the cellular response stimulated by the hormone insulin. Insulin is a protein created in the beta cells of the pancreas based on a gene in the DNA. Insulin is released by the pancreas when cells in the pancreas sense a high level of glucose in the bloodstream. The insulin makes its way through the bloodstream to cells in, throughout the body. Each insulin molecule 
re reaches a receptor tyrosine kinase protein on the cell membrane of each target cell. The binding of insulin causes the two RTK proteins to come together, which causes the phosphorylation of their intracellular domains. In turn, this sparks a phosphorylation cascade that activates a series of reactions throughout the cell. Part of this cellular reaction includes a vesicle full of glucose importers binding with the cell membrane, which in turn imports tons of glucose from the bloodstream. Now, let's consider what happens to this system when there are genetic changes in the molecules that make this system function. Consider a mutation in the gene that codes for insulin. Normal insulin has a very specific shape, and the slightest mutation could disrupt this shape. Even a slight change in the shape or chemistry can stop this molecule from binding to the receptor, which can stop the entire signal transduction pathway. This is a real genetic condition, and it causes neonatal diabetes. Similarly, the genes that code for insulin receptors can also inherit fatal mutations causing Donahue syndrome and the physical symptoms of leprechaunism. Both of these mutations are very detrimental because they are at the beginning of the signal transduction pathway, leading to a complete disruption of the entire insulin pathway. Now that we've covered an overview of the changes that are possible in a signal transduction pathway and have seen how these changes can affect signal molecules and receptor proteins, let's see if you picked up the important points. Pause the video now and take this short quiz. You can find answers to all the questions through the quick test prep link in this video's description. Now, let's take some time to consider changes in different components involved in signal transduction pathways. Previously, we considered how changes to the start of signal transduction, such as changes to the signal molecule or receptor protein, affected the whole pathway. Now, Let's consider what happens to a signal transduction pathway if changes occur later in the process of signal transduction. In general, the same rules apply. If a mutation causes significant changes in an enzyme at the start of the signal transduction pathway, it will disrupt the entire pathway. On the other hand, interruptions downstream in the signal cascade can allow some parts of the pathway to continue, while others do not. Let's see how this might work in a more specific sense. Take a look at the complex signal transduction pathway of the wind signal molecule. Disturbing the middle parts of this signal transduction pathway can have interesting consequences. For example, if the gene that creates the AKT1 protein becomes mutated, it may not disable the gene translation cellular response. However, it will affect the insulin sensitivity response. While there is still much research to be done on this topic, this may be one reason why some people are more susceptible to type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance than others. Mutations like these may also create complex changes that lead to certain cancers. While we often consider changes in signal transduction pathways a bad thing, some pathways naturally change over time. Consider the leaves changing in the fall or a tadpole undergoing metamorphosis. Even you can get more energy if you start exercising regularly because it changes several signal transduction pathways in your cells. In fact, now's a good time to take a quick break, do some jumping jacks, and get your blood flowing. When we come back, we'll look at how specific chemicals can alter signal transduction pathways in different ways. While all of the changes we have talked about up to this point involve genetic changes that change the function of proteins within a signal transduction pathway, many proteins, enzymes, and receptors are also susceptible to natural and artificial molecules that can affect their function. In fact, there are many types of inhibitors that can change the function of an enzyme in a signal transduction pathway. Competitive inhibitors literally block the active site so the substrate cannot enter. Non-competitive inhibitors bind to a different spot on the enzyme, but likewise prevent the catalysis of a reaction. Uncompetitive inhibitors bind to the enzyme substrate complex, which has the same effect of stopping catalysis. Inhibitors that are specific to different enzymes within a signal transduction pathway can drastically change the cellular response that gets initiated. Likewise, activators are molecules that can bind either reversibly or irreversibly to receptor proteins. 
these substances can activate a pathway that would otherwise not have become activated. For example, many insecticides are potent activators of signal transduction pathways in neurons, which leads to hyperactivity in insect brains and eventually to death. Alternatively, signal transduction inhibitors are being studied for the treatment of cancers, since cancer is often caused by a faulty signal transduction pathway. Now that we have finished covering how changes in signal transduction pathways can lead to various cellular responses, let's see if you can answer some AP style questions. Pause the video now and take this short quiz. You can find answers to all of these questions through the quick test prep link in this video's description. Be sure to check out all of the other links to get access to all of the study resources we have created. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful and informative. If you have any issues with the content or need a question answered about signal transduction pathways, please add a comment below. Be sure to subscribe to the Biology Dictionary YouTube channel to get easy access to all of our AP Biology videos and resources. Good luck!